Well, happy Saturday, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem here today. It's the 15th of March. Again, a gloomy day here. Time lapse uh, looking uh, weather trends 360 camera south here. So uh, lots of fog here today. So not so great. Was great last week. Again, it, uh, took uh, Mrs. Captain Kirk on her 11 year anniversary to her happy place in the subtropics. Again, uh, so a lot nicer weather down there. It was 80 and sunny and not so windy. So it was a uh, Again, happy uh, anniversary to the Mrs. Captain Kirk. This week we'll be traveling to uh, Doma Palooza, uh, their annual conference out in Utah. Again, very excited about these folks. Again, they've built some really cool software with our year ahead sales predictive analytics. Uh, share a video here at the very end if you want to watch that about how clients have been leveraging this uh, new really cool tool. So I'm excited about it, and uh, we'll be talking about it out at uh, Doma Palooza on our power of one degree, how every one degree of temperature change has huge impacts on seasonal sales and everything you and I buy. Looking at severe weather, we finally had an uptick after a slow start uh, this year. March uh, picked up some ground here. We uh, added here in March, we've added 53 tornadoes, 148 um, hail events, and 749 wind events. So uh, tornadoes are now similar to last year, still 24% below average. Uh, we'll see here after this. Uh, still got another round here today in the southeast and uh, east coast here on Sunday. Hail is uh, way down, um, and the big winner is wind cases. Wind cases are way above average here. So... Um, Wind is not always just uh, with thunderstorms. It can be with just obviously these big, huge storm systems that are moving through the central U.S. This is a three-day outlook from the Severe Storms Prediction Center here. So again, high risk is shipped out of the Missouri, Iowa, Illinois areas and shifting down to the southeast here. So uh, look out to uh, Mississippi, Alabama here today. And then uh, Sunday shifts to the east coast, and then we start to diminish here probably. So this is probably the, the big event here for the week. You can see this huge storm system, again, very intense, low, moving up through the Great Lakes. Um, so, again, some severe weather risk as we get into Sunday here on the East Coast. But then we'll watch the next system here, and this will be another snowstorm, again, moving into the upper Midwest uh, for, say, Wednesday, Thursday time frame. So they're the big winners here for snow here the last for March so far, while the East Coast, Northeast has been on the warm side of these big storm systems. So we'll see here, again, the pattern uh, Maybe weakening a bit here in terms of severe weather as we go through the two-week period. Season to date snowfall here again uh, through the 15th of March here. We're picking up some steam in the west, uh, still way below average. Uh, northwest is still 33% less than last year, least in 10 years. South southwest, uh, least in 22 years. The winters are going to be in the south, obviously, with those bigger storms we had this winter. Uh, southeast, most in 10 years. Northeast, while we're way up over last year, 78% versus last year, most in four years, still well below average in uh, many areas along the coastal northeast. And again, if we just look at these uh, weekly snowfall trends here, the bars are the blue bars were snowier than last year, yellow bars much less snowier than last year. So the top five weeks here highlighted, uh, number one was there in early January, number two was in number two, number three, number four were all there in February. So February was certainly a snowy month. The good news here, too, is the, the flu cases are on the mend. So as we get warmer here in the spring, um, flu can't survive as long on those handles and things that you and I touch. And, and as a result, uh, we're starting to decline. But this was a very late spiking season because we had such a hot fall versus back in 2023. We had a very cold fall in the southeast. And, they, you know, that epic Thanksgiving spike last year, Christmas, this year's Valentine's Day. So it's a very late starting flu season. But the good news, again, on the way down. Looking at last week here, ending here today here in the U.S., uh, it was a good week. 0.9 uh, warm in last year, warmest in nine years, fourth warmest in 40 years, 25% drier, driest in four, below average. Uh, snowfall, 38% less than last year, least in nine years. All of these warm, dry trends are definitely better for store traffic and seasonal merchandise sales. So this was certainly some good news after a pretty soft uh, traffic pattern that was developing in January, February. So an uptick here a bit. Don't tell that to folks in Canada. Amazing how the change, the polar vortex is weakening, but uh, camped out over pretty much coast to coast in Canada there. Canada, 9.9 .9 cold in last year, below average. Again, almost wall to wall. Uh, maps since it left are the trends versus average, and these big maps here are the trends versus last year. Look at this week here again, the third week of March, 20, week ending 22 March. Um, uptick again. Uh, again, we're still winter in the West. They had no winter really during winter, and now that it's spring, they're getting some winter. 3.7 warm in the last year, warmest in three years, sixth warmest in 40 years nationally. Um, northeast is the, the big winner here, northeast and uh, maybe upper Midwest. But the upper Midwest, don't let warm fool you because you're still going to get some snow in there. It's amazing. You can be warm, but get a blizzard. Uh, snowfall up about 2%, 19th most in 40 years. And uh, wetter, 56% wetter than last year, most in three years, 18th wettest in 40 years. Very dry in the south. So, again, we've seen these big fires flaring up uh, that flared up in the Carolinas, um, some now in Oklahoma. 
uh, the spring fire season is concerning here in uh, many areas of the south, southwest. Uh, so we'll see. Just something to be mindful of until the vegetation gets growing. Look at the six-day snowfall trends here. So we see the one storm exiting the upper Midwest. And then let's watch this next one move in Tuesday, Wednesday. And so again, another good solid, solid uh, swath here of moderate to heavy snow from uh, Nebraska all the way up into Wisconsin. And that continues into Thursday. And again, we just aggregate the trends here. So the six-day snowfall trends are 249% more than last year, most in 12 years, ninth most in 40 years. Snow for about 44% of us, the U.S. population. So again, a lot of snow here for mid-March. Um, look at the next week here, getting the last full week of uh, March, ending the 29th here. 8.6 warmer than last year, warmest in 13 years, six warmest in 40 years. Snowfall way down, down 62%. Um, below average, uh, rainfall down 33%, least in three years. Unfortunately, this was Easter week last year, which was just frigid, cold, snowy, wet. It was just a horrible cold pre-Easter week last year. Unfortunately, we've moved Easter all the way into mid-April this year. So this would have been a great week to have Easter because warm, dry, not so much snow would have been a good theme uh, for Easter sales. But unfortunately, that's again moved out to mid-April. So if we look at the world two-week aggregate trends here, just aggregating from the 16th to 29th. Again, cooler trends across Canada, uh, cool in the West, starting a warming trend though here next week. Uh, Europe, uh, Western Europe is uh, certainly cooler than Eastern Europe and all the storm rainfall and snow again across the world here. So still very cold and snowy there across Canada. So they're not thinking spring just yet. So that folks, we'll end here with uh, the promotional video here on Domo 360, this year head software solution, just AI, agentic AI solutions. It's crazy awesome. And uh, Medea, one of our clients, will talk about it and again how uh, they're leveraging our year head intelligence to help big retailers. So that folks have a great week ahead and we will talk to you this time next week weather trends 360 ceo captain bill kirk here together let's change the way the world looks at year ahead weather forecasting has ai already exhausted all human data not so fast mr elon musk the domo weather trends 360 year ahead predictive business solution says otherwise let's hear from mydea maker of seasonal products on how the year ahead power of one degree technology serving 12 business sectors combined with Domo makes AI business intelligence immensely actionable and profitable with customers like Home Depot, Amazon, and other big retailers. Hi, I'm Casey. I'm the competitive intelligence specialist for the home comfort team at Mydea. Here at Mydea, we've been using weather trends for over nine years with the power of one year ahead forecasting. And we use this to forecast our seasonal products such as fans, heaters, air conditioners, for all of our major customers. The great thing about the Domo and Weather Trends software solution is that now I can see all of those answers in one place. I can see our historical sales data as well as what Weather Trends is predicting for our future sales data, all tied in with the weather that we can normally see in a separate platform. And this is great to help me get quick answers about specific weeks or what we're forecasting to get an answer over to my sales team or to my president. My name is Cody Irwin. I'm the head of data partnerships at Domo. At Domo, we're constantly trying to find companies that have differentiated data products that can really unlock value for our customers. Uh, weather Trends, we feel like, is one of those, a company that really offers a unique perspective on weather with the year-ahead forecast and the, and the power of one data to really anticipate what's going to happen in the market. AI weather got the winter completely wrong. Let's hear from Casey on how she leveraged the year-ahead power of one-degree sales forecasts. We were seeing from NOAA and many other weather sources around the world that this winter was supposed to be very warm and it really impacted how we were going to plan for the demand of heater season. But Weather Trends was telling us it was going to be the coldest in seven years, so we planned to make sure we had plenty of inventory and our customers really looked to us and trusted us because they know how long we've been working with Weather Trends. So they allowed us to bring in the right amount of inventory that has now been able to get them through the season. We've really been intrigued and fascinated by the conversations we've had with Weather Trends and Mydea around like how this data really makes a difference, how it drives behaviors, and really multi-million dollar decisions. It really changes the game for companies. The last nine years of using Weather Trends at Mydea has allowed us to really put our trust in one source. Without Weather Trends, I would have to sort through several different sources, all giving me a different answer. But Weather Trends allows me to have one place that I can always trust that will get us the right information that we need.